Church here, and welcome to the Game Grinder, and today we are doing a roundup of games I played in 2017. So unfortunately, this year I didn't get to do as many game reviews as I had done previous years, so this is kind of my way of at least touching on a lot of the games that I got the chance to play and didn't get to share my thoughts about it. This is mostly going to be kind of quick hits. Uh, not going to say a whole lot just because I played a good chunk of games this year. And of course, I would like to say that this has been an amazing year for games. Uh, definitely, arguably, one of the best, if not the best, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really looked at other years in comparison. But with that said, I'm going to jump right to this. So I'm just going to go through the games in order that I played through this year, starting at the beginning and, of course, ending at the end so let's get to it then so this one wasn't necessarily a 2017 game but i finished it in 2017 uh and that was the last guardian so i'd started it at the end of december last year and as i said i finished it up early january and this was one of the games i did get a chance to do a review for uh as it stands it's my pick for game of the year 2016 uh, just a fantastic game. Team Ico, same people who brought Shadow of the Colossus and Ico, uh, put this together, spent many years in development hell, unfortunately, but it was finally released, and I don't know what a lot of people had set for expectations, but the game exceeded my expectations. I absolutely loved it. I loved the bond between the boy and Trico, and it was just a very interesting way of passively telling a story providing you with environmental clues on what's going on and presenting the story through emotion, which is something that I always enjoy with video games. So then technically the first game that I played for 2017 was not a game released in 2017, again, uh, but this was a retro game. It's been kind of a while since I've really focused on playing retro games, just trying to keep up new releases is really tough. I finally got the chance to sit down and play through all of Rocket Knight Adventures for the Sega Genesis. Uh, now this was a game that I've been very nostalgic for for many years. One of my friends used to have this on the Genesis. It's another great Konami classic as far as I'm concerned. And it's just a really fun, competent platformer trying to do something a bit different. You know, in the heydays of the mascot platformers, there wasn't a lot of different things they could really do, but I thought with the Rocket Pack feature, it kind of mixed things up. Not a terribly difficult game, but don't expect to be able to sit down and play through in one go. It took me a few restarts to get through it, but I finally managed to do so and had an absolute blast, much like I remembered. And even though he is not on YouTube anymore, I would like to give another shout out to throwback gaming he had sent me the cartridge as he'd found a double in a flea market a couple years back so i am grateful to finally be able to sit down and play through that so thank you and miss you i hope you come back sometime so then on to the next game was one that i'd sat on for about a year uh, gravity rush remastered actually came out in 2016 i think in preparation of the upcoming sequel for gravity rush 2 and with that i became slowly more hyped for gravity rush 2 so i finally decided to sit down and play through gravity rush remastered and i am sure glad i did what an unexpected gem very creative game love the art style Love the characters. It's a serious game, but it presents itself in kind of a light-hearted, whimsical sort of manner. The Gravity Rush powers are a lot of fun, really unique gameplay, but of course, with this game, I also had the chance to do a review for it. Uh, I mentioned that the ending is very, very abrupt, and fortunately, as I'd mentioned, there is a sequel that picks right up where it leaves off and fills in those blanks. And then immediately right after that, I jumped into Gravity Rush 2. Had a blast with the first one, was really excited for the second one, and it did not disappoint. It's one of my favorite games of 2017, top three for sure. And it's one of those times where a lot of times they'll take a sequel and they just make it bigger. And they very much did so with Gravity Rush 2, but they added a lot of neat inclusions to enhance the overall gameplay itself and the experience. They added in vocalizations for the characters, more story, more comic book scenes, and some very, very fascinating twists in the story to wrap everything up in the end. Unfortunately, there was one little piece that was missing, but they did rectify that by adding in a story-based DLC, which I'd assume was kind of the plan from the get-go, unfortunately, but kind of wraps up all the main story and leaves it off in a very great place. So if you haven't played Gravity Rush or Gravity Rush 2, I highly, highly recommend doing so. 
Then the next game of 2017 that I played was Tales of Basiria. So a little backstory for those who might not know. Uh, I'm not really going to go into details at this time, but I've talked about it before. So back in 2002 or 2001, whenever Final Fantasy X was released, uh, it is the game that completely turned me off of JRPGs. I used to love JRPGs. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, PlayStation. Every chance I got to play JRPGs, I did. Final Fantasy X for whatever reasons, ruined JRPGs for me, and I did not play a single game released after that point for a very, very long time. Many games looked interesting to me, but none really stood out until I saw Tales of Biseria. The initial trailers kind of had me sold. I kind of like the, the dark, brooding atmosphere and character motivations behind it. Of course, I love the art style of the characters, so I was like, what the heck, let's jump into a JRPG and kind of see where things are at now. And I, I can definitely tell you, I really, really enjoyed this game. It's very cool to see where Japanese role-playing games have gone since I last played them. Uh, I love the fact that the characters are very similar to what their hand-drawn counterparts would look like, much like an anime. And really, the main thing for me is the main character, Velvet, and her story of revenge. A lot of times in games, they will have a, a tragic event happen, and a character vows revenge, but somewhere along the way, they kind of, like, do a turn and become, like, the, you know, the superhero of the story and trying to save the day, where, in many aspects, that still does happen, but Velvet stands true to her motivations the whole time. Nobody gets in her way. <laughs> Cities are ransacked and burned. Lots of people die. Though she does grow as a character, her end goal never changes. Really enjoyed the game. Fun gameplay. Great twists in the story. The only thing I could say, I'm not a huge fan of grinding anymore. So if maybe they reduced the game's hours by like 10, I probably would have been ecstatic. But I'm definitely not complaining about the time that I spent with Tales of Basiria. Next game on my list is the most misrepresented game this year by far i've talked about this many times on the podcast if you haven't listened recommend going and checking those out to get some more in-depth thoughts of mine but mass effect andromeda so once this game was released for early access for like streamers to kind of show it off there was a very intense focus on some poor facial animations and jankiness to the character designs which i think all the controversy about it is very overblown go back and play any Bioware game. They're not the best at facial animations or character animations. But ultimately, what it really boils down to is a story. A lot of times I kind of compare this to Dragon Age Inquisition, where the beginning, uh, it kind of takes a little while to get going. You start off in this main area, pretty big. You have the opportunity to leave said area, but how I approach it is, is I'm, a, you know, I'm a completionist, so I clear the main area. So much like Dragon Age Inquisition with the Hinterlands, the first world in Mass Effect Andromeda, it takes a little while to get through. But once you start jumping different planets, getting the story going, starting meeting the other characters, I think it's a great Bioware game. As far as the Mass Effect series, it is the worst in the series, but I think it's a definite must play for any Mass Effect fan. Then the next game I played, I was looking forward to for some time. Originally, when I saw the trailers, I was pretty much sold, and that is Little Nightmares. This is a smaller indie release for consoles. I think it might be on Steam as well, but it's basically your side-scroller indie kind of puzzle platformer game. I think much like Limbo or Inside. This one with another kind of dark twist to it. Solid gameplay, very, very creative character and monster designs. Really enjoyed the layout of levels. Just wish the game was a little bit longer. Then we have Super Russian Roulette. Now this was a Kickstarter homebrew game for the NES. Essentially you play against a cowboy, uh, you can have other players participating, and it's Russian Roulette. You spin the chamber in the game, you pull the trigger, you see if you die. This definitely makes for a fun party game as I've had friends over, we've played this a few times, and it was fun every time. It might not be a game you play all night, it's definitely fun to play in quick little sessions. I will say that the coolest part about it is the cowboy himself has tons of voice lines that are actually voiced. He loves mocking you while you're wasting time taking your turn. And if anybody gets the chance, I would definitely recommend checking it out. The next game here on the list is one of the kind of big contenders for game of the year. Not my game of the year, but I wouldn't argue with anybody who picked this as their game of the year, and that is Horizon Zero Dawn. So again, this is another game that when I first saw trailers and teasers for it, I was pretty much instantly sold. It is a very, very well done kind of open world game. 
although I, there's a lot of comparisons to Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild, but I wouldn't say they're necessarily the same in so many aspects. Horizon's more of a very story-driven game, not a lot of pointless, tedious side questing, fetch quest missions like they do in a lot of open world games, but definitely more focused and less time wasting, which is something that I really appreciate. A lot of like Ubisoft open world games are just terrible, terrible with their side questing. The design of this game, the art style, like absolutely amazing like the 2017 in gaming look at horizon zero dawn as one of those to show you where graphics have made it and besides that fantastic acting by the voice actors and the character actors ashley birch she did a great great job as aloy and the story i it's amazing i thought it was so cool what they ended up doing with the story and it takes a little while to finally get to the true hints of what is going on with this world. So of course I know many of you already know whether or not this is a game for you. If you haven't played it yet, definitely check it out if you can. Fantastic. Then the next game here is actually an online multiplayer game that I backed through Kickstarter and that is Friday the 13th the game. So this is essentially a one versus seven online game one person plays as jason the rest plays counselors and counselors try to find things to fix cars a boat call the police and escape or survive and jason tries to kill everybody with some tools at his disposal now when i initially backed the game i thought it would be fun but i was kind of skeptical that it'd be long lasting so i only backed the physical version of the game which i got a month or so ago but i will say at this point now that i'm right around 300 hours played i'm absolutely loving this game wish i would have backed a higher tier but you know is what it is it's a game that takes a little while to kind of get the gameplay down but once you do it can be a very casual game which is something that I appreciate at this point being able to sit down and maybe play one or two rounds and calling it good for the night. It's definitely a game I would recommend playing with friends if you can. Even maybe just sitting on Discord and BSing. Don't ghost because that's kind of bunk. But it's a game that I am content with playing by myself as well. Just how it's structured with proximity chat like when you actually use your mic. You know only characters in a certain amount of distance can hear you unless they have a walkie talkie and they have a walkie talkie. I, I love this game. There's a lot of different aspects to it to give it a good amount of depth even though I haven't played a game like Dead by Daylight, I believe that your options are limited, it's a lot, lot more straightforward. So if anybody is on the fence, I would highly, highly recommend Friday the 13th. It is one of the most fun online games I've played in many, many, many years. I would put it up there with the enjoyment that I have with something like Left 4 Dead, which is pretty much my all-time favorite game. And then the next game was something that I was hopeful about, but I wasn't really sure what I would think about it, and that was Near Automata. So I'd kind of been following some of its development. I knew about the previous games, but not to any great depth. I knew basic premises, but I didn't really know much about the stories. I heard original Near was kind of weird, which I did pick up a couple years ago, but I haven't gotten a chance to get around playing. So I was like, what the heck, I'll jump into Near Automata and see what happens. And holy crap, this game is absolutely amazing. Like, I love this game. This is my game of the year pick for many, many reasons. I really enjoyed the story. Very creative, very interesting. Kind of presents itself in many ways that video games just don't do. This is a very meta sort of game, a very fourth wall breaking, though it's not cheesy about it. A lot of very interesting, like, existentialism discussions. The gameplay by Platinum is absolutely solid. This is like one of the few games that I've ever played where I'm using like pretty much all the buttons on the PS4 controller at once. It's insane. It like, took some effort to get used to using all the four shoulder buttons and multiple face buttons, but gameplay was a blast. There's a lot of really cool ways that it presents itself. It's fast paced. Love the character designs. The soundtrack was very unique, very different from what I've experienced in video games, and I absolutely loved it. And I will say, anytime I have to bring up Nier Automata, I have to mention that if you have played the game or have not played the game, and you haven't played through the full story, you need to do that. A lot of people stop playing after the initial credit scene, which is the A arc of the story. And there's actually five main story arcs that you have to play through to get the entire story, and that's A, B, C, D, and E. The game actually has 26 endings, but all the other endings are just kind of death sequences that throw in maybe a humorous little quip about the end that are wholly unnecessary, but it's the five main story arcs to play through and they pretty much continue if you just keep playing the game it keeps going there is one point where you have to go back and like kind of do a chapter select thing but i will say playing through the entire story stopping at ending a is like watching the first 20 minutes of a, of a great movie compared to watching the entire movie 
it's like good game versus game of the year as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic game, loved it. This is now one of my favorite games of all time. Then I'm sure I don't really have to say a whole lot about this next game, but I played Cuphead. Very excited for this one. Of course, a huge seller for me was the art style hand-drawn, classic animation, classic platforming, and wow, did they nail this game. Art style aside, the gameplay is rock solid. Good old school punishing, memorization through patterns, and telegraphing makes for one of those games that you can be proud to say, I conquered this game. And of course I did. Then on to another big talked about game this year was Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. This is another entry from Ninja Theory, who made Heavenly Sword and Enslaved Odyssey to the West, based in a Viking Celtic setting, with a strong emphasis on demonstrating what actual psychosis is. It's a game you definitely have to play with headphones, where they have voices coming from you from all different directions, shouting orders at you, telling you to watch out, telling you to run, great acting from the main lead. The gameplay didn't have a lot of depth to it, but it didn't really need to. Then another game I played that I might not necessarily say I completed, as it were, that is Windjammers. The first time I actually played this was earlier this year on a MAME machine at the Midwest Gaming Classic 2017, and essentially this is ping pong, but with people and discs and some superpowers. It's a really fun game to play with friends over. You kind of do your own little tournament brackets. Kind of reminds me of good old games like Dodgeball, but a lot of fun. Really excited for the upcoming physical release of this. And again, another game I would definitely recommend. Next was South Park The Fractured Butthole. This was one of my most anticipated games for this year. I absolutely love South Park The Stick of Truth, and I've heard a lot of people saying preferences of one or the other, but I don't think you can play one game without the other. They are both in line, fantastic presentation of South Park in video game form. All the jokes, all the characters are there and they're on par with what we've come to expect for the show. The gameplay is fun, they mixed it up a little this time, doing more of a kind of a strategy role playing game versus the turn based RPG. And a game I would definitely recommend, probably even if you don't enjoy South Park, but you would probably benefit a lot more if you do enjoy South Park. And if you haven't really watched South Park, I really recommend either going just going back and watching the last four seasons, or maybe starting from season seven and going on. The first few seasons of South Park are very outdated. I actually didn't like the first few seasons of South Park. It wasn't until after they did the movie that I finally started watching the show, and even going back and watching those first seasons. Didn't really care for them. But South Park is one of those shows that actually progressively gets better, which is hard to say. Their satire and their parody just gets better and better and more on point every year. Then the next game I thought got a lot of undeserved hate this year, and that is Bubsy the Wooly Strike Back. The sequel that nobody asked for and everybody questioned why, but in this era of retro revival, why not I say. Now a lot of people will bash this game, I think they're so focused on Bubsy 3D, such a bad game as it was, but again, I will argue Bubsy 1 and 2 were not bad games, maybe mediocre, but definitely not bad games. And really the same can be said for this new one. I enjoyed it enough to play through it, it's very short, it took me about 3-4 hours to get through it, completing all the level objectives, if you just blast through the whole game you could probably beat it in like an hour or so, but why would you do that when you're not making the most of the content you're given? For anybody who says they enjoy old school retro collect-a-thon platformer games and rip on this one, I'm, I'm honestly confused on why you would think that. But Bubsy, I enjoyed it. You know, I'm not gonna tell you to check it out or not, but I think the hate that it gets is totally unwarranted. Then the next game was one that I've been meaning to get to for quite some time after my friend played through it, told me to check it out. I then heard that IndieBox was doing a physical release for it, so I was like, sure, why not? I sat on it for a little while, finally got around to playing Hollow Knight. And this is another one of my favorite releases of this year, top three for sure. Hollow Knight is an absolutely solid Metroidvania. Your exploratory platform focused game, paths being blocked off until you get certain abilities, upgradable skills, lots of things to unlock. But my three favorite parts of Hollow Knight is the art style, really love kind of the hand-drawn look that it has, the depths to the scenery, and the atmosphere that it provides, and the wonderful backing soundtrack that it has. So many things that I saw while playing through Hollow Knight, I was just like, 
wow, that is, that's really cool. Just little things that really stood out to me that really made the game go above and beyond what it already was doing with its solid gameplay. I also played through one of the included DLCs and I'm looking forward to the upcoming free DLC. And that's the thing to mention too that you don't hear very often is all the downloadable content for Hollow Knight is free. Now it is only available for Steam at this time, but there is a Switch release coming out early next year. So definitely keep your eyes out for it because this is one of the best Metroidvanias I've ever played. And really lastly, the only other game that I completed this year most recently was Ruiner. Ruiner is a 3D isometric cyberpunk twin stick shooter. Kind of think Hotline Miami in a way, not with the punishing difficulty and quick restarting, but very similar in many ways. Less of a crazy abstract story. And the gameplay is a little bit more straightforward, but pretty much when I see a Devolver digital release, I'm gonna give it some attention because everything that I've played of theirs so far has been quite enjoyable. And I know they're just publishers, but they seem to have an eye for good projects. And of course, a huge element for any video game for me is the soundtrack and this new retro wave or whatever you wanna call it is great. Hard to go wrong in a video game with that stuff. So then I did want to give a couple shout outs to some other DLCs that I played this year. I'm not a big DLC person. Usually if it's not available when I play the game, a lot of times I just don't go back and play them because I've moved on to other games. Some are simpler than others to jump back into for downloadable content. But with that said, of course I had to play the two Shantae Half Genie Hero DLCs that were released this year. First one being Pirate Queen's Quest, which you take on the role of Risky Boots. Kind of replay through the game again with different mechanics, enemies mixed up, and with a funny twist on the story. And then most recently was the Friends to the End DLC. In this one you're playing as Roddy Tops, Bolo, and Sky. Again, kind of playing through the same levels again, but they mix things up with enemies, gameplay is quite different, fills in a gap to the main story, and really I kind of say think Lost Vikings, where you switch between the characters as, as you need them to make use of their powers. If you're a fan of Shantae Half Genie Hero, definitely play these DLCs, they're a lot of fun, love the extra effort that WayForward put into the game, even though they were Kickstarter goals, but it goes without saying pretty much anything Shantae. I'm gonna check out. So the not making the list this year uh, is the last game that I'm playing currently. I have finally gone back and started a Bloodborne. One of my friends really wanted to check it out and was like, hey, let's play it at the same time. So, so I'm currently playing through Bloodborne for the first time. I expect to be finishing that early January. And who knows where things go from there. 2018 looks to be like another fantastic year for video games. Of course, my backlog grows faster than I can keep up with it, but it's great to know I always have lots of games to check out. So hopefully this didn't go on too long, but I would be interested to hear your thoughts on some of these games. Do we share similar opinions? Do you think I'm out of my mind for enjoying some of the games that I do? But of course, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts. What were some of your highlights of 2017? And then I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel, leaving comments, liking and sharing. And with that said, I look forward to making more content in 2018, playing some more video games, and of course, talking about them because that's what I do. So of course, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you next time on The Game Grinder.